Hi everybody, uh, glad to have you back here today. Uh, so today it's a video, uh, another uh, Q&A on the, this one would be uh, the 6.5 basically uh, combining the fifth video of the series and the sixth video which was carving the soundboard. So as you can see we're already a bit uh, further ahead than what you saw uh, in the video so that's where I'm at right now with the soundboard glued onto the body. Uh, so that's going to be coming up in the next video. But for now, we'll just jump right in with the questions that I receive. And I receive a lot of very good questions uh, in those two videos. So uh, we'll answer them right now to put the information out for everybody. So the first one was from Lucha Dorito. Uh, what is this silk thing? I don't see it or I don't get it. Uh, so basically, uh, in the video, at some point, I'm mentioning that I see silk in the actual wood. Uh, soft woods and like hardwoods like oak will have uh, medullar rays. So medullar rays are basically the inside uh, system in the tree that brings all the nutrient. And when you cut it to um, uh, quarter sawn, uh, you can actually see those medullar rays. It's very easy to see on a piece of oak uh, like they, they show up like really really uh, quickly uh, in a softwood like spruce uh, you will see it as little undulations so if you come closer now this piece here on the soundboard doesn't show it as much as other pieces like I, I did on the octave mandolin but you can see some undulations and this is a piece of the uh, octave mandolin that I did and you can see like the growth rings are closer and tighter and also like you, you can see the the middle arrays or also called silk so uh, so basically that's what silk is and when you put a finish on it it just pops and gives it kind of a three-dimensional look so that's what uh, silk is so the next question is by Matthew Taylor. He's asking, when you are clamping with pony clamps, how do you keep the black pipe from staining the wood at the squeeze out point? Uh, when you wipe away the squeeze out, you can't get under the pipe. In this case, he says he's using some wax paper between the pipe and the wood. Um, so the thing is, like I, I my, you, you saw the starting thickness of uh, this soundboard. It was really thick, so I did get stains. But every time I get uh, material, there's always a little extra, so it ends up being removed when I, I do the drum sanding or the, the planing. Uh, now, that being said, I did a, a cutting board for my daughter, and I ended up having less of that play and had to deal with the little staining that you're talking about and I ended up having to go a bit thinner on the final thickness uh, that you can see right now. So that was a cutting board I made for a birthday. Uh, I didn't make a video of it because I was on a very tight crunch. But um, so like there will be some stains with the black clamping so you have to be aware. I think that your idea of wax paper is a very good idea. I've never actually did that myself but if I get to a point that it's uh, very thin uh, and I don't have a lot of material to play with, that's, uh, that is something I will probably use in my future uh, clamping. So I have an observation here from uh, Robert. Uh, he says that he's surprised a bit to see uh, me using tight bone glue. He was expecting high glue. Uh, I also have something along those lines. I think it was either on Mandolin Cafe, which I post uh, little bits of the build, or it was either on Instagram that somebody was mentioning that uh, I was not uh, following the, the traditional woods to, for the build or uh, traditional building, building techniques. So now my answer to that is that uh, AR blues were not available uh, back in those days, like the early 1900s. And I'm not even sure if the PVA glues were uh, available at that time. Now, <clears throat> if you're not sure about the difference between a PVA and an AR glue, the PVA is basically your white glue, and then the AR glue is kind of the yellowish tint one, which has been uh, modified. It's pretty similar, but it's been modified and it's got more um, uh, resistance to moisture, although I wouldn't use Type 1 1 onto a project that would uh, get soaked or have a lot of uh, humidity to it, but uh, it has more resistance to that and it's uh, stronger than the PVA. So, 
by using uh, this type of glue, uh, maybe I'm, I'm not following what was uh, back in those days, but it doesn't mean it's not a good means to glue pieces together. I don't personally think it makes a difference on the sound uh, regarding the, the whole assembly because it's just a means to hold the crafted parts together. And I've been having very, very good results with the AR glue or type on glue. So uh, that's why I went this way. Uh, once again, I, and I think I mentioned that in the previous one, is that I'm not saying I will never use high glue, but for this project, I want to go with what I know. And there's already a lot of factors or uh, things uh, involved with this project that are different, like already like the width is different, the depth is different. So I'm already uh, moving away from the traditional Mando cello. So using a different glue that was used back in the day, it doesn't make a big difference for me at this point. So the next question is from Thopper Sal. He's asking, so the first time that you carved that kind of scroll, how did you practice before you did it? That's just so intimidating to, to him. So uh, basically, I, I never actually practiced. I just went for it. Uh, I, I read a lot on how uh, it was done. Uh, a great book for that and a step-by-step Simenov -step, uh, uh, F5 mandolin book uh, is a very very thorough uh, it shows you all the the details with pictures and stuff and uh, so if you're a beginner and you want something to rely on I would uh, highly recommend Roger Simenov uh, book uh, there's other prints uh, out there but there's no manual to go with it so like in that book you get a free set of drawings to build your own F5 but if you go with an other one sold by somebody else, you will get the drawing, but not all the information that goes along to how to. So for a beginner, that's a great um, tool to have. But uh, if, if you want to practice, uh, like if you look here, so like a lot of you know, I, a, a little while back I made a 2x4 ukulele, and at some point I had started to make a 2x4 uh, mandolin so the, the top here is all 2x4 so there's a, a section of the 2x4 here and another little section here so if that's something that you want to practice you could totally do the same thing with uh, an F5 so you can practice the top but 2x4 is so inexpensive and that would be great practice work and the rim the rim was also 2x4 now this would not be by any means a good sounding instrument and that's why I'm not going to finish it I'm just keeping it in the back here uh, on the bench, but uh, like the to, to practice carving that would be a great option and very very inexpensive uh, to bend the side it's also a good uh, wood I guess to to practice and very inexpensive I'm not too sure how the scroll would actually bend with those because a 2x4 is not actually maple but uh, that's, that's a little uh, trick maybe if you want to get some practice run at carving a scroll uh, the 2x4 is a spruce 2x4 and it's quarter sawn so like you can see all the lines so it, it, it basically replicates the same as a carving uh, a top for uh, a mandolin or in this case a mandol cello. I have uh, Jatna77 is asking uh, how does your hand not cramp up when you do so much sanding? I honestly don't know. Um, I'm right now 41 years old and I work with my hands my whole life. Uh, maybe that's the reason. Uh, I don't put too much pressure onto the sandpaper. That's another thing. I take my time. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to go fast. I'm just taking my time and enjoying every minute of the process. So maybe those are all factors that makes that I'm not actually cramping up. But uh, uh, I can see why like, like the stress of carving and, and shaping those a uh, uh, little depression here could uh, cramp some people's hands. So I guess if it, if it cramps up, you just close the lights and you go for a walk and you come back the next day. And I, I do that quite often. Sometimes you see the video and my hat changes. That's because I went for a walk. Uh, that day, I, I like when I did the scroll, there was a day I started carving and I, I do have a footage of that video. And then I didn't like uh, how uh, my approach was, so I just left my chisel and everything, closed the light, came back the next day. The next day was a lot better. Uh, so uh, it, it's important to uh, listen and see what's happening while you're working on the project like that. That involves so many steps and with one step can 
basically ruin one part of the project. So uh, just take your time and if you feel like your hands are cramping up, just leave it and come back the next day. So David Sims uh, is asking, what is the big dip one inch from the edge? So that reference that uh, little section here. Um, he says that he has not seen this on other builders' instrument. You also do F5 mandolins the same way with the dip. What would be the purpose? Um, other builders do that also. Uh, it might not be as visible. Some people are blending it a bit more. I just like the, the, the sharp uh, approach to it. So to understand what it does is uh, you have to, to realize that it goes all the way up to here, uh, leaving this center section uh, thicker to help with the stiffness, but it's basically all the way around. So if you picture a speaker from your, your sound system, it's basically the same thing. So when the pressure is applied in the middle here on the speaker, you would have the same thing. So it allows, at a lower scale, it allows the movement on the top plate to go up and down with the uh, pressure of the, the strings on it. Now on a speaker, it would be created, the same would be created on the inside by the magnet, which is pulling and pushing. I have uh, another question by uh, Garrett, uh, not just Sawdust, which is a great channel. I, I, I watch every one of his videos. Um, uh, he's asking, um, did you ever had to start over in earlier builds? Um, no, I never had to start over, although they were not perfect. So if you look behind me, uh, this mandolin, this F5 there on the wall, uh, that it's, it's there right now because I'm actually re-finishing re the neck. So this mandolin was one of my earlier builds. This mandolin was made completely uh, using hand tools except for the spring, spring, the lacquer, uh, but everything else was handmade. So I used coping saws and, and uh, thicknessing. And, but basically, uh, if you look at the back here, uh, I'm actually reshaping the neck because after making more instruments, I realized that this neck was too thick for my likings. Uh, so I've been, I've been starting working on this one, uh, but I haven't really uh, had time to, to complete it because I've started this project. So too many projects on the go, I guess. So that rounds up pretty much all the, the question I received for the, uh, the section on to the soundboard. Uh, I want to thank everyone that left a comment, not, not necessarily a question, but uh, that, that brings a lot of joy for me to, to read all those comments. And uh, I really appreciate you taking the time of watching the whole video. Uh, so. Uh, as you can see right now, uh, like I mentioned, the mando cello is uh, basically, uh, the soundboard is basically glued on. All I have to do now is some work on the inside with the tone bars, but the apertures are rough, uh, rough shaped, and I can still see the line, so I'll be able to, to get closer to that and then uh, kind of finish the fit on, on it. So at this point, when the inside is done, I'll be starting to work on the neck because the neck needs to be installed before we work on the back. So um, we're, we're making really great progress. It's, it's going really well. I like how the instrument looks right now. Uh, it's already really responsive. So uh, yeah. So once again, uh, check me on my Instagram, on my Facebook page. I've added Patreon and I'm, I'm not going to bug you with it, but uh, it's there for you guys if you you want to help the, the channel and then uh, until next time, I wish you all well.